Now, in question 3, we're given the parametric equation x equals 7 cos t minus cos 7t and y equals 7 t sine t minus sine 7t. And we're asked to find dy dx in part a. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, you've got to use the chain rule. And just as a reminder, okay, the chain rule is that to find dy dx, it is equal to dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. You can also write this a different way. You can write the dy by dt in, but instead of timesing by dt by dx, this is the same result as dividing by dx by dt. So it's this idea that we're going to follow. OK, so starting off, I'm going to find dy by dt. OK, so dy by dt will equal, and if we differentiate this with respect to t, differential of 7 sine t becomes 7 cos t. And the differential of minus sine 7 t is going to be minus 7 cos 7 t. We need to find dx by dt, so dx by dt, if we differentiate x with respect to t, differential 7 cos t is going to be minus 7 sine t, okay, and the differential of minus cos 7t will be minus minus then sine 7 sine 7t. So in other words, plus 7 sine 7t. Okay, so we've got basically dy dt and dx by dt. So we can substitute it into this formula. So therefore, dy by dx will equal dy dt which is that, 7 cos t minus 7 cos 7t, all divided by negative 7 sine t plus 7 sine 7t. I tell you what though, I like the fact that this term is positive. It would look much better if we put that term first actually. So we'll put that underneath as 7 sine 7t minus the 7 sine t. Never like starting a, an expression off with a negative if I can avoid it. So there we go. It actually said that we don't need to simplify our answer, so presumably that would generally do for dy dx. But I'm going to nonetheless simplify this because I can see that 7 is a common factor. It's in every term, so we could actually divide through by 7. So that would be 7 into 7 there is 1, 7 into 7 is 1, 7 into 7 is 1, 7 into 7 is 1. It's in every term. So therefore what we have is that dy by dx, if we did simplify it, becomes cos t minus cos 7t then all divided by sine 7t minus sine t. Alright, okay, so that gives us then part A. Now, in part B, okay, what we've got to do is find the equation of the normal to the curve when t is pi upon 6. So, I need first of all to get the gradient uh, at, the, uh, at the point on the curve where t is pi upon 6. So in other words, I need to say that when t is pi upon 6, I can find the gradient by substituting t equals pi upon 6 into here to get dy dx. So therefore we have dy by dx will equal cos of pi upon 6 all right, minus the cos of 7 pi on 6, all, right, all divided by the sine of 7 pi on 6, minus the sine of pi on 6. All right. And 
you get on a calculator and work that out, you should find that you get that it equals minus root 3. Okay? So, because we've got to get the gradient of the normal, remember that the gradient of the normal will be negative the reciprocal of this. So, therefore, the gradient of the normal, okay, just write that in, will be equal to minus 1 over this result, which in other words is, my, is 1, I should say, over root 3. Okay, so we've got the gradient of the normal. What we need to do now is just get the coordinates of the point on the curve where t is pi upon 6. And to do that, I need to substitute t equals pi upon 6 then into the equations for x and for y. So if I do that, okay, what we have is x equals 7 cos of pi on 6 minus cos of 7 pi upon 6. So just write that in, 7 cos pi upon 6 minus cos of 7 pi upon 6. And again, if you work that out on the calculator, you'll find that you get 4 root 3. Also, we have to do the same for y, substitute t equals pi upon 6 then into here, and we'd have 7 sine pi upon 6, 7 sine pi upon 6, and then minus sine of 7 pi upon 6. Okay, we got that in there. Do that on a calculator, and what you get is 4. So we now have the gradient, 1 over root 3, and the x and y coordinates of the point on the curve. So, all we need to do then is get the equation of the normal, so I just move that up, okay, and say that therefore equation of the normal okay, is, okay, and what it's going to be is going to be uh, well, first of all, I'll just remind you, the equation I'm going to use, by the way, okay, just put it over here. Remember, it's a straight line. I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, where m is the gradient, x1, y1 are the coordinates of the point on the line, which are these two points, x1 is 4 root 3 and y1 is 4. So it's much better using this version rather than y equals mx plus c. So the equation of the normal, therefore, will be y minus y1, so that's the 4, equals m, the gradient, which we see is 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3 then, multiplied by x minus x1, and x1 is 4 root 3. Looking ahead, I can see that if I was to expand this bracket, this root 3 will cancel out with that root 3 there. So expanding out the bracket, I have y minus 4 equals x over root 3. Okay, and then 1 over root 3 times the minus 4 root 3 is just going to leave me with minus 4. So if I add 4 to both sides, I therefore have that y equals x over root 3. And I suppose you could leave it as that, as one of the simplest versions, but I prefer to rationalise this, in other words, remove the root 3 from the bottom, by timesing top and bottom by root 3. And if I do times the top by root 3, I will therefore get that y equals x root 3, or root 3x, and multiplying the bottom by root 3 gives me root 3 times root 3, which is just simply 3. So that's my simplified version for the equation of the normal. And that brings us to the end then of part B.